Welcome to the Flying Knuckleheads podcast, the podcast for people who think they can fly planes. But they can't fly good. So, okay. All right. Welcome to the Flying Knucklehead Flying Knuckleheads podcast, the podcast for people who don't fly good or talk good. I'm Krimi. This is Jizz. Joining us today is Ravis. You know what? I'll take that. All right. It's way, here. way better than the ones that we got. <laughs> Thank God we're not doing this live. I always told you live would be a terrible idea. Yeah, I've I've always said I should mm. we we should do live. And I've been like, no, that's retarded. Why would you want to broadcast this to the world to see just how retarded we are on a daily basis? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the Flying Knuckleheads Podcast. We got a guest here today. This is Travis. Travis is with us from Lone Star Paramotor. He's a paramotor guy, if you didn't really guess that by the paramotor thing. Well, thank you. Travis, yeah. <clears throat> uh, not to interrupt what I'm sure was going to be an excellent speech. <laughs> Why do you feel compelled to fly engines from what I think would be better suited to go-karts? That's not a go-kart motor. It would be better suited to go-karts. How many horsepower is in one of those? Uh... Between 20 and 30, depending. Go-kart. Yeah. You tell me a 20 or 30 horsepower go-kart wouldn't be fun? That would be a lot of fun. We should definitely take one. Can we take one of those and put it on a Barbie Jeep? Wait a minute. Have you ever worn a paramotor and driven a part of, uh, Barbie Jeep at the same time? And would you? Would I? <clears throat> yeah, probably. Okay, we're going to have to do that whenever no, we come out to Hondo. That. No, but That's on the list for coming to Hondo. I, ha I have a Jeep at the house. It's not a Barbie Jeep, but it'll work. All, all paramotorists want to put a paramotor on and whatever it may be, skateboard. Um, my mind was somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I was telling him, way better than flying under a pair of panties. Well, it's a paramotor. <laughs> would be would be, would be to get on a wakeboard uh -huh. and try and get across a lake mm. with the motor on your back. You'd probably need like the boat assist to get going, but you think you could sustain on a paramotor? You would yeah. <clears throat> good good plan. You would have to already be flying. Ooh. Get to the boat that's going the same speed as you and have your buddy put the wakeboard on your feet. I wasn't and even thinking proceed to fly <clears throat> off and wakeboard on the paramotor. They have the slip on. And I bet you it's possible and yeah. I wasn't even thinking of a wing. I was Trust thinking just like boat <clears throat> driver on that one. We'll save your ass. We have to try it. I mean, if Medina Lake ever has water in it again, I've got people out there that have boats. He's got a boat. I would, you I have would a boat? Be, yeah, we got a boat. Sweet. So you're down? I, thanks for volunteering. Well, for awesome. That, Travis. I mean, look we forward have to that video coming up. Probably, in, is, probably in the unofficial. summer. Unofficially is as good as we ever get. Yeah. <clears> it's going to be so glorious. We are going to take to the water. Jeff's going to meet us in his Oh, in the boat, seaplane. Right? Oh, that would be Wait, better. Way better than a tow boat is a tow plane. Oh, a tow plane. What? what why were we setting our, our goal so low? This is stupid. Tow planes is How the worst. How slow can he go? I guess. Well, he doesn't need to go so slow. He needs to get you up to speed, and then you're on your own. The, the key is getting you up to speed, right? Yeah. How and fast he, do you need to go? 80? Mm. I don't want to die or anything. <laughs> I mean, what do you... Collateral dam damage at this point. What do you think the, the on-step speed is for Jeff's plane to, to taxi on-step? 40 to 50. That's not bad. You can do that, right? Just trimmers all the way out, speed bar. Yeah, no. <laughs> Smaller wing. <laughs> Smaller wing. Yeah, like a wash rag, maybe. We could. We got some uh, some skydiving guys. We could get you like a skydiving wing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we just need to... Get that speed down to you know, oh, maybe fine. 30. Okay. Well, <laughs> that'll that'll be something in the works. That sounds like a pretty good idea, though. I think we should try to incorporate paramotoring into basically everything we do. As usual, somebody has a better idea that's safer, that's better. So, safety, you bring up safety. That's an excellent point. We should always be safe, but you should still have fun. You should have fun. Do you guys, do you guys have fun in paramotors? Yeah, we, uh, that's, that's the whole point. That's the nice thing about paramotors is they, uh, that's all they are is fun. Oh, I thought you guys were obligated to fly those. Why would anyone do that? <laughs> I'm kidding. You're I'm not kidding. legally required. 
It's not like serving off of like a prison sentence or something. No, I, I mean, if you want to be technical about it, it's because it's just so unrestricted. You can just do mostly anything you want that you can't do in a GA airplane. You can fly right above the ground. You can go I mean, like I've seen Jimmy 18, fly. 20 miles an hour, so you can like just spot things and wildlife and whatever. Anywhere that you can legally fly, you can examine way better from a paramotor. Just because so, you're going so slow. So legally, you guys fly under Part 103? Yeah, FAR 103. So what what kind of legal obligation restrictions do you have to worry about there when you're flying under 103? And I think paramotors even have like a little special carved out part of 103, don't they? They do. Um, so the basics are solo only. Mm-hmm. Have to be under 254 pounds. I gotta go on a diet. <laughs> Carry less than five gallons of fuel. Wait, wait, is that with the person? No, it's not. I'm oh. just making a fat so you joke. You can have a 254 pound unit set up. Yeah, it's it's straight oh. part 103. I mean, that'll carry you oh, and a, a wakeboard. <laughs> it's a serious machine. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but seriously, 254 pounds of of paramotor because your wings are so light. Like, well, they're our, also including trikes and stuff too. Yeah. Our tandem setup has to be less than 254 pounds and the tandem is uh, an exemption from the FAA that's only available to instruct. That's awesome. How hard is it to get to instruct? Like what's the, what's the red tape there? Basically, since it's an FAA exemption, uh, being an instructor is not an FAA exemption. Uh, it only applies when you're taking up another person, passenger. Huh. So uh, the exemption that I was talking about is just to be able to take up a passenger legally. There actually is no legal requirement for being a paramotor instructor. So when you right. guys instruct, <clears throat> you're just you're just instructing and it doesn't matter. Just, yep. It's, so you, it's just instruction. You guys use, uh, you guys use, uh, there's an organization, right? USPA or something. Yeah. So there's a preferred way of doing things, um, in the industry. And there's a couple of different organizations that, um, produce instructors within, and they also, uh, the major ones are the ones that carry a blanket, uh, waiver. Mm. So you complete their criteria and then you fall under their waiver exemption to take up passengers as well as, like I said, no legal requirement for instructors, but they they produce instructors. So the, the organization holds the waiver with the FAA? That's correct. Oh, cool. And you're under a blanket waiver. Nice. Is there an ultralight? organization we don't know about well there's an also organization there's the what is it the usaa united states I oh U- usua <laughs> usua yeah. the other one's like a oh, it's a bank insurance where my bank, yeah. where my wife works <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. yeah there's the usua but i don't know if they're actually even doing anything anymore i, I think ever since like instructor ultralights went away the two seaters mm-hmm. you know they replaced that with light sport what was that 2001 or something it's been a, it's I feel been like a it's minute. 2007 when it finally like ended ended. Yeah, it's been a minute, but ever since that happened, I don't. I think most of that stuff went away, which Dude. is really hard. R.I.P. <clears throat> Ultralights. Mm. I wouldn't do that. I've yes, heard, you would. Yes, I would. <laughs> I've heard tell tale of that happening, which sucks. So our uh, our ultralight field that we were based out of, one of our mini bases is a Kitty Hawk TS-67, and these dudes <clears throat> train out there a lot. And back in the heyday, it looked like what they do, which is, you know, five, ten uh, students at a time just taken to the skies, having a very good time. It used to be like that with ultralights, and then, of course, LSA came in and sort of, like, smothered it a little bit. So we're trying, flying knuckleheads, to get ultralight training back on the map, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just want you to know that we're trying. <laughs> okay, we're trying. And if you know something, say something. So How do we do this. One thing I want to point out for people that might not have a sectional open and handy is TS67 is near San Antonio. That might be <laughs> that might make a little bit more sense to most people than TS67. Uh, but yeah, so who do you work with? Uh, what do you guys do? What are you all about? So yeah. <clears throat> 
the company I'm with is a small company called Lone Star Paramotor, and we're proud of the pilots we produce. Typically over a hundred a year, and uh, it's that's the cool thing about it is flying is the result of what we do, but everybody that's coming there is only coming there for fun. Yeah. They take 10 days off of work. They come to train to fly paramotors because often they saw it on YouTube or they saw somebody flying over their lake in this fabric thing that they could just barely hear when the wind was right, hopefully, as long as as long as the pilots are being nice. Because they can be an annoyance if you overcrowd your airspace. An annoyance? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, <clears throat> If but it's yeah, fun, it's it's it, awesome. They they everybody comes to fulfill a dream, and flying is the end result. I feel like I feel like if you're having fun and somebody else isn't having fun, they're likely to be annoyed just by the fact that you're having fun. It's often the case. The yeah. fun police are here. I saw you smiling. Uh, hey, you? Karen. What's up, Karen? <laughs> How did you know my name? <laughs> but yeah, um, we've been around for about five years, and I've been a part of that for about three. Nice. And I've seen it for like the whole time it's been at the airport, and I will tell you, they have the best times. Uh, these these dudes stop flying, you know, during the winter at like five thirty six, and nobody leaves till nine o'clock. Everyone's around, they're debriefing, they're having a good time. It's pretty awesome. That was actually one of the things I was feeling today. Like whenever we're hanging out, just talking afterwards, I'm like, this is not something that like most GA pilot. It's not a GA thing. And you know, a little bit of an ultralight thing, but even still not to the degree that you guys are. It's like the community is pretty awesome. No, I, it completely changed my life. I, not to <clears throat> overstate it, but yeah, it completely brought me out into the aviation world. And it, just being able to lift off the ground with a few pounds of fabric and a motor on your back and do it safely is unbelievable so yeah i joke around about calling them para panties <laughs> but it's in good free. fun yeah it's in good it's awesome it's so cool like these guys have this parachute with 20 30 40 horsepower motor on their back they can throw it in their car they can go anywhere they want and just set up and fly whereas <clears throat> if i want to fly my plane somewhere i've got to fly the plane somewhere to fly the plane at that place Slightly very slowly. Yeah, yeah. My plane's <laughs> not slowly. fast enough. Like, I would rather <laughs> drive. It's faster. For a lot of places, yeah. But then you don't have a plane when you get there. But then you fly the plane, then you don't have a freaking car. With the paramotor, it's like, hey, I've got a car and an air vehicle. Wow. So I can go out to Moab. Oh, dude. Moab trip? You guys doing a Moab trip this summer? Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to fly Moab since I started flying. And honestly, mm -hmm. their paramotors are very much more affected by the wind than anything. It's just the lightest aircraft you can think of. So flying Moab is the dream, and you can only do it on the perfect day. Really? It, absolutely. It's got to be perfect. It seems like ultralights are the way to go. Ultralight trip to Moab? I'll go to Moab either way. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That's Dune buggy trip to Moab? All, all the most incredible Dirt places. Dirt trip to Moab? That could happen. Broken arm trip to Moab? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. i will be done with that. <clears throat> oh, you know, my buddy's got a toy hauler. We could probably throw a bunch of paramotors in the back of that thing. Yeah, I got a quad or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how long does it take to take <clears throat> a normal person from uh, zero to hero on paramotor? So, there's a few major things you learn. It's a fabric wing, obviously, so you have to learn to control it in the wind, which generally takes two to three days and over those two to three days we let them rest and then also teach them basic motor control which is basically just power and not power and pre-flighting the units just to so that they know what all the parts are what they do and what to look for it's like any pre-flight and then typically it's between three to four days and they're flying solo and about i would say two or three days after repetitive flights then they're getting pretty good uh there are exceptions some 
are slower, some are faster. Some pick it up in just a couple of days. They just get it and Some boom, naturals. in the air. It's cool to watch. <laughs> Chris, I hear GA pilots right now being, ah, oh, three days. Oh, four days, that's not enough time. And then the other part of GA pilots is like, Jesus, I wish it had only taken three days. Yeah, so obviously it's a – I was talking to Ron about this earlier. It's kind of one of the, the really interesting ways of especially the way that you guys do it is almost more of a military-style like training of – this is, well, you know, the class is 10 days long, right? <clears throat> so you got a weekend, a week, and then another weekend, and you have a certain syllabus, and it's like you have to go along with the track. You have to really, at the very least, pick it up pretty close to the, the time frame you need versus like GA training is so different by comparison because it's one-on-one, -on -one, and then if somebody's not picking it up, you can always take more time, and then I feel like a lot of people end up dragging it out longer than they really need to. I don't know if that's... uh. I don't know if that's a student issue or an instructor issue that, you know, I, we were out at Castroville the other day and a girl was soloing and I was like, that's awesome. I was like, how many hours does she have? Like 40. I'm like, I got my license at 40. Like, why, like, why are they just now soloing? That seems crazy. I soloed at like five, which I think my instructor was crazy. Probably not a best idea. I don't, I don't see soloing anybody at five hours, but still, man. It's just a very different world and, and different philosophy, especially the way you guys train. Yeah, I would say so. And there's honestly quite a bit more to learn in GA. For sure. From what I've been learning. But it's also, it's wing control. And if you can control the wing and you can control your power just that you can do it smoothly. Yeah. All you need is to be able to do that. But there's, uh, it's also just not just that. It's, we typically take our students up on tandems. Okay. I was going to ask if like their first so, flight was usually a solo or a tandem flight. Uh, ideally, it's at, at least one tandem flight. That's yeah. cool. And because it is such a bigger wing, there's quite a bit of difference that right. they'll feel from the tandem wing to their wing. But so they're doing at least a tandem first and quite a bit of uh, ground school because it's so physical. You can only, right, can only, you can only run them down the field for so long before it's detrimental to them learning. So Is the tandem, sorry, I'm going to cut you off here. Is the tandem usually going to be foot launch or a trike? Or is it depending on what they're doing? It's dependent on the instructor preference, okay. the site, the amount of wind. Typically, uh, trikes have a lower wind tolerance because they're easier to flip over. And foot launch tandems require a lot of skill because you're in front of somebody, you're your passengers yeah you gotta you. you gotta run and sink you know right so you have to run kind of with a wide stance while they run and so it takes some skill that they don't have you're just hoping that they have that skill and you you run up so and hoping you're we, not gonna like land on top of them whenever they trip right so at kitty <laughs> hawk great. we don't we don't do that because if the wind speed is high enough to warrant a foot launch tandem it's typically going to be too bumpy for a new pilot to enjoy it in the first place. All right. That does make a lot of sense there. I didn't know they did tandems like uh, tandems foot launch. That mm -hmm. just feels very weird. I've seen a couple, I've seen some videos of like tandem foot launches and like they always like when it goes well, it looks sketchy. <laughs> it's like, it does. <laughs> and not only uh, so there's like the sketch factor, which is like always going to be there. But then there's like, that's super awkward. And like, whenever it's a dude and a chick, it's like, I, that's understandable. When it's two dudes, I'm like, <laughs> like bump, bump, <clears throat> bump, bump, bump. What's that? I felt bad enough when I went skydiving and I was like strapped to this strapping young German guy. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> went in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably actually the most uh, uh, terrifying airplane ride I ever had was in the back of a uh, skydive 172. Oh, man, a 172? I don't, might have been a 182, but there was one seat in it. All the plastics were out. My feet were all the way down in the tail cone. And I was like, this is fun. I'm having fun now. And then they just threw you out? Yeah. Then they're like, you get up to the top. And of course, you're in a 182 with uh, five people. So you got a pilot and a pair of tandems because there's only one seat. So you're all sitting on the floor. And then the first tandem goes. I was second. And uh, 
know, they strap you up and make sure that you're all good to go. And they're double checking all your buckles. I'm like, please, for the love of God, make sure I'm attached to you. And the guy was like, okay, if you start to fall out of your harness, it's very important. You take your goggles off and you give them to me because they're brand new. <laughs> and I was like, sure thing, boss. Uh, me and producer Horton over there were watching. Jeremy. We were watching a video where, uh, a, 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 what is it? A fucking hang glider. A hang glider. They didn't strap the passenger in and they jumped off and this dude just clinging to the uh, instructor. And the whole time I'm like, oh God, he's going to do a quick emergency landing. And oh, there's no. these fields everywhere. You guys have seen it. And you're just like, okay, go to the right by the houses, just land. It's going to be fine. And he just goes up and he's like two, three, four hundred feet up. And you're like, why haven't you landed at this point? Oh, what are you doing to this poor person? Like testing their grip strength? <laughs> this is the exercise portion. You will enjoy it. It's like they started off and they're like they're 20, 30 feet up. And it's like, okay, you know what? Even if you have to take a crash, turn into the hill. Oh, they're and, in. and they're like, oh, let's, let's, yeah, let's get about four or five hundred feet under us. And the guy made it all the way to the bottom ridiculously. But I was like, yeah, that baffled the crap out of me. And I think maybe that was brain fade on the pilot of like, oh, yeah. I fly to the bottom. Like he he'd never out. even like that concept of never even entered his head before. Do you think he didn't notice that the, the passenger was detached until they were already like in the pattern? No, no. My only, knew. my only thought is if that were a paraglider, they're purposely launching down that hill for ridge lift. Yeah. yeah. If he got into some serious ridge lift, he might have not been able to punch through it and get down. I don't know. He didn't. So they're going down the hill. He never turned even cross. And again, if they got ridge lift, maybe it would lifted him more. But I know, um, you know, hang gliders have a little bit more speed control than paramotors do. But still, I think anything where you're putting extra altitude between your free hanging passenger between between your payload and the ground. <laughs> yeah. The the living payload. Yeah. Dude, I was like traverse the mountain, just get down. I'll Even take, if he like fell from like i I'd take a fall from twenty feet versus two hundred. I'll take well, I'll take a z like a five foot fall at fifty miles an hour versus anything. Yeah. I, have you guys ever jumped off a set of stairs over five, six feet? Oh yeah. It sucks. <laughs> That's where my limit is. At six feet, I'm like, I'm not jumping up. <laughs> 20 feet is terrible. Especially when you add like a lot of forward velocity to that. Oh, man. Well, whatever. They all survived. That's a good story. Hey, Ray, we're all feeling good. You ever done any hang gliding or has it just been, well, what's your, what's your, yeah, what's your aviation experience besides before paramotoring? Yeah. Before? Yeah, before. Yeah. Like, did you ever, yeah, like, none. like, you're like, I'm a land dweller, and they're like, hey, I'm going to fly a pair of panties. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I. the truth is that family were military pilots, and I'm the first one of, like, my generation to get into aviation, and Ron was the catalyst for that. We uh, actually, <clears throat> bummer, but we went to a funeral, and I saw a paramotor on the back of his truck, and it was just like, that's... The coolest thing I've ever seen. And he I already knew that he flew, but like. He's like, I, I like, got okay. this funeral that sucks, but afterwards I'm going to go get high. Yeah. Well, on an airplane or <laughs> aviation mobile. Aviation mobile. You should start calling them that. It is it's some sort of aviation mobile, I guess. So how many years have you been into it? It's three. Uh, it's three. Is All it right. three? It started in March of 19, so... Oh, almost four. Almost almost four. four. So you weren't doing anything before that. Oh, crap. No, nothing at all. Why are you doing barrel rolls? Shut up. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. <laughs> mom, he's not doing barrel rolls. I've never seen him do barrel rolls. Yeah. Um, he's not the best pilot out there. Because I'm flying knucklehead, man. I don't know, because it's fun. This is why you're here. You are a knucklehead. It's true. I've seen him do it. I think pretty much any paramotor pilot is a knucklehead by default. I'm just going to throw that out there. Look, I strapped I'll, a motor I'll on accept, my back. I'll accept your assertion. There. I think, I think, uh, yeah, paramotor pilots, ultralight pilots, you're all knuckleheads. Beyond that, you know, there's a little bit of a vetting process. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're flying a Cessna, you're not necessarily a knucklehead. You might mm. just be a straight edge. 
Yeah. Square. I think that was a triangle. If a uh, if a 172 is the most exciting thing you've flown, I'm sorry. FAR 9,271 says, nope, not a knucklehead. <laughs> now, Travis, you've talked about your, your past and your experience. Now, let's talk about your future. Yeah, what's going on? Speed round. Are you a student pilot? Yes. Technically. Technically, he has the card. <laughs> okay, technically. <laughs> technically. As technically as it gets, I guess. How many hours are you going to get this year? It's the beginning of 2023. I think I can, <clears throat> I think I could pull the 40. You heard it here first, folks. All right, yeah, you have a you have a gold date on like when you want to get your 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 private pilot license, PPL if you will. Certificate. But it's no, way better to call it a PPL. No, however, uh I did just do it and get the ground school. I've got the card and um currently doing the ground school online ground school and uh, i think i'm ready to to get in the air start flying uh, yeah i mean my good buddy here has uh taken me up a few times and he's got it he's gonna he's gonna be a pilot there's no way he's i'm not allowed to pilot. say that you've let me yeah. Control the airplane. But... Who was the pilot in command? You were just the pilot in command. <laughs> yeah. So, a few hours doing that, and uh, pretty pretty confident it's for me. Yeah, it was annoying talking to Jimmy earlier. He's like, yeah, Travis is great. He's like one of those people that like picks up anything, is really good at it immediately. I'm like, I hate those people. <laughs> Don't make me do No, he's good. Uh, his trial by fire was definitely... Uh, coming into Kitty Hawk, I was making him work the pattern and uh, keep it nice and square, keep it to the same pattern every time. And we would do mock approaches, and then we were coming down and touching down. And then finally I was like, I'll take over on the landing when it's time. I've got you. And then he landed, and I was like, good job. You've landed an 800-foot <clears throat> strip. <laughs> Your first landing. Whoops. Yeah. I so, never had to take over. It was good. On an uphill battle. It was fine. It was good. So you already have more experience than a whole lot of like CFIs that I've flown with that are scared to land on grass because they're like, oh my God, it's grass. I'm like, there's nothing to be scared of here. It's just grass. You'll be fine. Yeah. Go over holes. That's a little different story. Big old sticker bushes. Dude, that can ruin your day. I came in. I came into the shop the other day, the hangar, <clears> and uh, the plane was just sitting flat on the ground. <laughs> I'm like, son of a bitch, these mesquite trees are going to get me. Well, so like we went out to uh, Horizon, which hasn't really been maintained in a lot of years, but it still shows as an open airport. Jeremy and I, because we're going to, we just stopped on the way to Stinson for his flight lesson. And we stop over there. And I was like, oh, it's a little rough, but not too bad. And we're taxiing him back. Hit a gopher hole with the tailwheel. Tear the tailwheel off the airplane. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, that's fun. So we, uh, Horizon is basically an abandoned airport. We went over to the old hangars and we just start fishing around and we find a pile of bolts in the dirt and we end up finding the exact perfect bolt that we needed to put the tailwheel back on. I was like, great. We get the plane jacked up. We throw a bucket underneath the tail, put the tailwheel back together, get in the airplane, start it up. And I was like, God dang it. It won't taxi. And Jeremy's on the right seat. I was like, look at your tire. He's like, oh yeah, no, it's flat. So you randomly found the <clears throat> right bolt. In a abandoned airport, yep. put your tailwheel on. The exact the exact bolt that we needed. Do you still have that bolt in there? No comment. All right. I didn't think you yeah. did. Honestly, I didn't think you did. Um, how would you was, get the tube fixed? Uh, we had to call for support at that one. Yeah. Then uh, our good buddy Charlie brought out a little air compressor and some slime. And we made the executive decision that we're going to air it up and just turn it into the wind and take off from where we are was about halfway down the runway. I was like, we'll be fine. It will be fine. There were some trees where we had to kind of, you know, make sure we made our way through, but it was, it was all good. There was a, a lot more mesquite bushes out there than I would have liked. Yeah. Yeah. We should buy that place and clear them out. We should definitely buy that place. I could not think of a better place to train ultralight pilots. If you have too much money and you're looking for a place to donate, <clears throat> Flying Knuckleheads will take your money and invest it into ourselves to buy a airport. Um, and we'll give you free ultralight training for sure. I mean, 
I don't need to say anymore. It's already done. Thank you. Uh, or Venmo. It's going to be at the bottom of the screen or Cash App or something right, right. in this area. Thank you. Travis, <laughs> you're going to be a uh, you're going to be a pilot. You're going to go with a uh, I bet you should you should go with like an instructor that's not like your normal I'm an instructor looking to go to the airlines type of instructor. You should go with someone who's a little cooler. Did you know uh Chris just got a CFI? I heard tell a rumor. Yeah, that's what I did. You want to yeah. learn in the bush cat? Yeah, well, I I want to get to the point of PPL, but I don't really want to fly a Cessna. That's true. Good point. So Cessnas are great training airplanes. They are very they're like dead simple to learn. But it's it's not really a lot of fun. I think for Travis, you're gonna be based out of Kitty Hawk, right? Or or your oh, backyard, so. right? You need you need to learn first on a big field, safe, lots of landing areas, you're cool. And then you need to transition into a small field 100% because you're going to be flying into one all the time. Yeah. Uh, so here's a, here's a good question for you, though. So you're flying paramotors, having a ton of fun. Why why go for a PPL? Like, what are you looking for? I've just always wanted to do it. It's lifelong goal, dream. I, I actually really enjoy learning stuff like, you know, I've been getting into the airspace, and it's just enjoyable to get to the point where that confusing stuff isn't so confusing anymore so it's it's a goal and i can also like if i were to want to take a passenger i want to take that passenger up safely and do it the right way and do it fun but do it the right way why are you so noble god i'm like an <laughs> asshole jimmy's like the plane might run it might not would you like to come flying with me yeah bring your children <laughs> let's go that was literally the first time i met jimmy we were supposed to come look at an ultralight and jimmy's there my buddy who's looking at the ultralight's not there yet and jimmy looks at me he's like what do you weigh i'm like I'm like 200 pounds he's like i just took my slats off you want to be my test weight <laughs> i was like okay never met this guy before in my life on an airplane i've never seen before that's just been modified this part may have to be cut i don't know no i think it's legal it's <clears throat> experimental amateur built it was B-A-B. not a test flight <laughs> what's a test flight anyway it's when you test what you're flying is that in the far's it might be that's good cfi answer <laughs> Why don't you look it up and then tell me what the answer is? I think that's the good CFI answer right there. That's, yeah, that's why I'm not a CFI right now. I'm not looking anything up. I'm just not doing it. No, that's the things. that's the student thing of like if a student asks you something, you're like I don't know, look up the reg and tell me. That's true. That's because the real answer is I don't know exactly. So why don't you look it up and then we'll both learn something today. <laughs> I'm so much nicer to my student. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Travis. like, if I don't know the answer, I'll look it up and I'll make sure you know. <laughs> I'm sure Chris would really do that, but just not for you <laughs> or me. No, because that way you, you hedge against, like, you're not saying that I don't know. You're like, it's in the regs. So all you have to do is look it up. You're teaching them to find their own answers because you don't want – what you what do you want? Like, Travis, in, like, 25 years, be like, hey, Chris, like, what's this reg? Like, dude, freaking look it up. I taught you how. I feel triggered like he's directly attacking me for being that guy. I'm still that guy. I, I actually, I still text my CFI and I feel bad for him. And I'm like, I should probably just look this up, but I'm going to ask him anyways. Hey, Pierre, <clears throat> Pierre, what's the answer to this question? He knew what he was getting himself into. Exactly. It's his fault. Actually, I've been through a few instructors. The new one is, uh, he's a good instructor, but he, he's the one I ask him because he reads a regulation one time and he hasn't memorized. Ooh. And I'm like, I cannot do that. It's not going to happen ever in my life. I'm so jealous. And then every once in a while, whenever I find that he's wrong on something, I'm like, yes, I do like my happy dance. And like, and then it lasts for about three seconds. Yeah. And then you're back to being you. And then I'm back to myself where I'm wrong. No, that's the thing. Learning how an airplane works and how the things work is, it's easier to remember than regs. Well, yeah. Written like textbook. Well, I'm difficult. I'm good at knowing like the gist of a regulation. It's like, oh, it says it says basically this. And like, what does it actually say? I'm like, basically this. I'm like, if you want me to know exactly, I got to look it up. Yeah. Dang, I wish it worked like that, where you could just know the idea of it, the the intention, and 
but they don't care. They want you to know it. I think like, obviously the intent is like the biggest one, like for, you know, if you are 61.119 low flying operations, it's like, I know the gist of it, but if you want to know the exact wording, I'll look it up. But I know that like you have to stay over a thousand feet over congested areas, 500 feet over non-congested areas, and then at an altitude where you're not going to put undue hazard to persons or property over sparsely populated areas. But what the FAA then you guys don't do that. Just so you know, you don't do that. I think you guys, are, you you're not even required to stay 500 feet away from people, right? Uh, open air and open air assemblies of people. Not an open air assembly of people, just a random Jimmy standing out on a runway. Taking pictures. That of you. counts because he's a people. I'm uh, a as, as far as I'm aware, it counts as if it's just one person. God, I feel like I really want to look up this right now. I because I think I believe for 103 that you can still go within 500 feet of people. Well, I don't think there's that regulation in... over them. You can't Not... fly over them. You can fly right next to them. Can you throw things at them? You are not allowed to throw things if it causes any hazard to anybody on the ground. Which brings or us to property. Subway Bomb. Subway Bomb. Oh, no, we were going to do uh, McBunker Busters. McBunker. Have, you, <laughs> have you seen the Subway throw? No. Oh, is it a farmer, it looks like? Yeah, they're, so they're, they're out like on a combine or something. The guy's like standing off like waiting on lunch, and then like an old 170 comes cruising by and throws a Subway sandwich at him, and it totally like hits the dude and like knocks him down. Takes him out, dude. <laughs> How fast? Well, I mean, once is this thing flying? Probably like seventy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a football. <laughs> that's a, <lot. laughs> oh, a foot long. You can tell for sure. Yeah, dude. And then he had to eat this smashed ass <laughs> foot long. You know, I got mustard on my overalls. Damn it. Just meatball. So we're gonna do something, right? I think make bunker busters, but with uh, parachutes, right? Like we did the GoPro. Yeah. Although that GoPro. Um, instance makes me question your aim. So anyway, we're gonna throw McDonald's uh, McChickens or McBurgers? double cheeseburgers. Come double on, cheeseburgers at people. I'm not at people. Two people. Phrasing. And then what was the point of that? Where is this a competition? Do you want to like knucklehead competition instead of flower bombing parachute cheeseburgers? I think it needs to be if it's not it is today if we ever had a awesome between the two of us if we had one flying airplane would be nice <clears throat> that's for the next episode the airplanes don't fly without problems it's it, they're like temperamental women i don't know what's up with them it, all right so reverse question you're making it sound like you guys can throw things you, you general aircraft guys no so, yeah <clears throat> but Kinda. if you so, all right, if you if you take that logic and apply it to skydivers, right, you're throwing things out of airplanes at people, mm -hmm. but they have parachutes. So knuckleheads. <clears throat> yeah, knuckleheads. You're throwing knuckleheads out of knuckle aircraft. Knucklecraft? Yeah, so what's the difference between a skydiver and a double cheeseburger? As long as it's got a parachute, you're fine. So we're going to do all this uh, from the paramotor. Yeah. We can do Wait, can slow. you throw something out of a paramotor? Does it yeah. instantly get sucked backwards? Oh, no. Just a... It's, it can't be a tissue, tissue paper and go right back, but if it's got any weight to it, you can throw it. What about the World Tissue Throwing Championship? How are you going to... You can't even do that. I what if it's an entire roll of toilet paper? Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty fun. Right. I've got a few teachers. You got to make sure to throw it where it's going to unroll, you know. You got a good Classic spiral. Halloween. Yeah. Style. Yeah. Have so, you thrown eggs? No, I haven't thrown eggs. Okay. Who's the one that complains about the noise around the airport? Which Never mind, one? cut that. <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah, which one? <laughs> so everybody loves paramotors all the time. <clears throat> yeah, everybody that flies paramotors loves paramotors all the time. I don't think that's Actually, I don't think that's true. Yeah, hunters don't love paramotors. Hunters are not our biggest fans. No, so... You know, you get it. <clears throat> okay. Jeremy and I were out flying ultralights one day. We're like buzzing fields. And I'm like, oh, let's drop into this field. And like we're just like just starting to drop in. And it's like, oh, that's a tr that's a hunting stand. Let's. I don't want to get shot. Today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, I believe today was the last day of deer season for this part of the world. Yesterday, I saw I flew right over a guy that was dragging the deer out of the <laughs> field. Oh shit! No bullshit. <laughs> I saw him dragging the deer out. Of the, I'm gonna go this way. 
Well, so, hey, at that point, you're not scaring us deer away. I mean, yeah, yeah no, I think we were good. Dude, what if the deer just got up and ran? He's like, curse you. <laughs> <laughs> curse you, pair of motor panties. <laughs> <laughs> so the coolest thing I ever saw was a... Uh, like a mountain lion stalking a deer in a field as I like came down for a low approach, I was going to land. And then I realized the, the wheat, the hay, whatever it was, was too high in the grass. And I was like, that's a big old kitty. And then I looked up and I was, he was like doing the crawl thing. I'm like, dang, look at that. And there's a buck over there. I was like, oh, he's going to murder him. <laughs> wow. I saved a deer's life. Oh my God. I'm a champion. Ah, uh, and then you can go in that deer's life later by not seeing it and hitting it on the runway. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dude, I... Okay, every time I land at, like, specific airports so that it will not be named, they Divine. say, do a, do a deer run first. And I'm like, what would I do? I can see the... Why do you want... Chris, do you know I would do a deer run on a perfectly flat runway on a perfectly flat piece of property? During the day or during the night? Day. Uh, why would you do a deer run? Because you want to do a low approach. Now that you say that, I think they just wanted me to do a low approach. There you go. Okay. Well, anyway, you guys. There are you awesome. go. If you guys have ever ever been accused of like doing a flyby, like that was not a flyby. I was just making sure the runway was clear of deer. Yep. Wildlife clearing. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have to do that all the time? Yeah. <laughs> you can, oh. you do. I see these guys drag their feet on the ground for like a hundred feet at a time, and I'm like, man. Wish I could do that. And then I go down and I try and drag one landing gear on the runway because it's a low wildlife <clears> approach. And it is as much fun as they make it seem. Well, I've gone from numbers to numbers many really? times. Really? Yeah, yeah. Moment of silence for the sole of your shoe. It's mm -hmm. good. Got, got the uh, the water foot dragged down. Is that, is that a big... Man, I haven't really done that yet. Plenty of people do, but water is the... A nemesis of the paramotor. Let's get into it. What is, why is water so bad? And what is the savior from water? It's really, the savior is really hoping that your flotation devices actually deploy, which are CO2 operated. They have, I, they say it's a salt tablet. I'm not sure if that's actually what it is, but it is a dissolvable tablet in the bottom that within a second, it will huge pillows of CO2 pop out. It's like an airbag, but it's obviously to keep you afloat and your 70 pound motor. So that's where the danger comes in. What if you're really sweaty? <laughs> Does this ever happen? Like the, the yeah, salt, yeah. it pops in air. Has that ever happened? Um, actually, if it rains really hard and you got your motor in the oh, hangar. No. We've we've had them blow off from just that much moisture being in the hangar. Hey, it man. takes quite a bit. I mean, there was like a you know two three day rain of a deluge. We got it. A but. deluge. Oh, you verbose mother trucker. <laughs> but yeah, it, that's the the fear. You know, you've got a strap on each leg across your belly and across your chest, and you're strapped to a, an engine that's got the only flotation on it is. If there's not an, a full tank of gas, you got some air in the gas tank. Silver lining. But it's, uh, yeah, it'll, it was the number one killer of paramotor pilots up until they invented those flotation devices. Well, that's cool. So if you, uh, say for instance, you lose a motor over a big chunk of water, right? And you can't glide to shore. Mm -hmm. Are you going to ride the paramotor all the way to the water? Or are you going to be like 20, 30 feet up? I'm going to go ahead and strap out and... Hasta pasta this. That's a good question because basically both. You're, some people would do one, some people would do the other. I guess if it were my, my emergency, I would probably... The best things I've seen on video and the best idea that I've heard is to, if you know for sure you're going in, take all your straps off. You're still sitting in a seat. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a seat board that pops out. So you're basically in a lawn chair once you're flying. And um, all the straps gone, you're still flying, motor's off. And you can flare that wing down to just a few miles an hour to where you can run. So I would probably flare it some and mm -hmm. slip out. 
basically because you're trying to get that, in my mind at least, you're trying to get that big fishnet <laughs> full yeah. of lines <clears throat> out in front of you. And you know it's got its flotation on the motor, so as long as they work, it pops up in the water. Now you've got something to swim to to hang on to. Uh, but that's <laughs> ideal conditions if something goes wrong and you can get rescued. But water's water's super dangerous for a paramotor. It's just a weight. It, it's dangerous for everything. I saw 172. Did you guys see the 172 video? Which one? Uh, yeah, right. Um, they're they're landing on the beach, engine out. Uh, they hit the water, and it was shallow water. But and it looked like a great landing, but it flipped over and it turned out fatal. Yeah, and often it's a lot of GA planes will flip over, and yeah, it's a super it's a it's a bad situation no matter what. But <clears throat> I think they say the the statistics are there's fewer fatalities in water. Like you are statistically safer, I believe, to put in water than attempting to ditch on land. I've seen, I saw a really nasty one in Florida. I think it was last year. Uh, they were along the beach at a thousand or so, lost an engine, and they attempted to land on a bridge, a busy bridge. And like they hit two or three cars, like everybody in the airplane died, and like one or two people on the ground died. And I was like, there's water, right? They were on the beach. It's like, yeah. I would have put it in the water. It, for one thing, it's like, you're you're not you're going up taking the risk like you know you're taking the risk. Uh, I'm not going to put somebody else's life in danger if I don't have to at all. Yeah. But it's a lot easier in a, in a retractable gear. Like if it was in the Mooney or something, obviously gear up. I think you're you're really survivable. Yeah. Yeah. You just skate in. Or if you're a serious, you know, just pull the handle. But that's just a normal landing, honestly. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think what I read is that one I'm talking about, uh, lap belts only. Yeah, lap belts only. Is, I rode in that 175 I flew in the other day. was lap belts only, and I was like, oh, I'm like terrified. I'm like, this is crazy. Okay, I'm a little bit weird. Like, whenever I fly ultralights, I wear a helmet. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't want to, like, have some dumb little 30-mile-an-hour crash that kills me because I freaking knock my head on a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. It's free. Like, <clears throat> after you buy the helmet, you can wear any plane. It's it's free safety. Yeah. You have tons of helmets. Motorcycle. Why Knuckle Ranch? Go there. Bring yeah. your dirt bike. Or your airplane. Ultralight. We, he does have a landing space. I'd be into that. I wonder if, like, the parachute guys could take off from there. Paramotor or parachute? Parachute's probably not. Quit calling us the parachute guys. <laughs> <laughs> the parachute guys could land there. They've talked... the. The Skydive Castro people have talked about it. Paramotor guys. Yeah. Ooh, yeah ooh, oh, you know what? Paramotor you... from the back of a dirt bike. That would be challenging. Can we do that? You're a passenger on the dirt bike. You get it up to speed. I don't I mean, see that he'd happening. Get, he'd probably get yanked off the back of a dirt bike before he had a chance. Well, for one, trying to get the wing up and then trying to sit on the back of a dirt bike with a paramotor on. I, I don't see that happening. I mean, it's safe, but it's not that safe. <laughs> Yeah, it's a knuckle-headed thing. I think Somebody <laughs> comment below about how this is a good idea, please. I think the biggest concern is, like, I have a row of trees right on one side, so you do get nasty rollers. Like, the wind is a little ugly right there. Yeah, no, we need a good day to fly. Yeah. If it was, like, straight calm, like, evening, you guys could probably do it. But if it was, like, a breeze at all, I think the rollers would kill you. You invite a bunch of paramotor pilots, you, you're going to get a bunch of paramotor pilots. Just, Just saying. Yeah, like if you ask for one, you're getting ten. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That'd be some cool video, though. Like, honestly, some dirt bikes riding beside a dude, like, dragging his foot. Be sweet. That could be cool. Bush cat mowing down the paragliders. <laughs> I'm always terrified of flying in a kitty hawk whenever you guys are flying. Sorry. Because <clears throat> I'm like... That's the appropriate answer. Because usually I'm like flying in like around the, the just San Antonio. I'm like watching for airliners because the airliners are stupid. And then like I'm like, oh, thank God. I'm down below them. And I like, get over close to Kitty Hawk. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I got to start watching for paramotors everywhere. You guys are so hard to see. Which is yeah. weird. Yeah, I know. Neon huge yeah. parachute. Mm. And I can't find you. And then all of a sudden you're right there. I'm like, oh, ah, cool. Evasive maneuvers. Which I like doing anyway. So thank you. 
Yeah. And I don't think it really counts as evasive if, if you like you fly at them for a while and then be like, oh no, break right. Of <clears throat> maneuvers. Mm. So do you do you like being buzzed by airplanes when you're flying in paramotor? Definitely lets me know that uh, somebody I know usually is, <laughs> is the one low over the field. But I mean, if somebody's like, hey, I'm going to fly right over the top of your wing. Hey, buddy. No, I, that's not good. Man. Not, not good? No. Wingtip vortices? Knock, knock you right out of the sky. <clears throat> so what I've seen from, from these dudes being out of the field is they're a lot safer than I thought. I imagined every time they go up in that contraption that a wingtip folds under and you have to throw a reserve chute. And I haven't seen a single person collapse their wing. Well, so I'm very good conditions. disappointed. Well, they also, well, obviously you don't, but the students are flying beginner wings, which are much more collapse resistant. Do you guys fly with reserves? Yep. Nice. Uh, some schools don't because uh, they're afraid that because oftentimes if say the instructor can't take them on tandems, they're not legally allowed to, whatever, then the soon their first flight is their first solo, which is crazy. Yep. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so there's so, schools out there that you can't yeah. tandem first? Right, and there's schools Sweet. that don't want you to fly with the reserve because they know it's scary and they don't want you to freak out and throw <laughs> the reserve because that's far more dangerous <clears throat> if the wing's flying. Then you have two wings effectively counteracting one another, and who knows what's going to happen. Everything could be fine, and you could come down under the reserve, or they could counteract one another and spiral you down and, and hurt That's what you. happens. Things it, happen. It can happen that way. So what? When, when would you throw a reserve? When your wing is not flying, and you can't get it to fly again. So they can get twisted up. They can have collapses that hang up other lines and you can't get it out mm -hmm. and any, anywhere in between. But basically, if you if you aren't getting any glide out of that wing, then you throw your reserve. Have you and, ever hit your reserve? Nope. What's your, what's your scariest paramotor moment? Uh, that <clears throat> wing I'm flying now, um, when I... I was being stupid. I went up and threw it around a little bit. And you have to do certain things to keep it from collapsing when you start doing bigger maneuvers. And one of them is adding pressure on the outside brake. And I thought I was doing that, but not enough. And I went into a big wing over and the whole, <laughs> the whole thing, like I'd say 40% of it just flapped in. And I instantly turned about 100 degrees and flew off the other way. <laughs> and it scared the daylight out of me. You're like, and I'm done for the yeah, day. I went, I went and landed. <clears throat> and yeah, that was that. But it was, it's always pilot air. Or at least it almost is always pilot air. As long as you're flying good gear. Fly good gear, don't fly garbage. Yeah. I agree. So yeah, well, speaking of like... Somebody wants to paramotor. They're like, okay, cool. I, I went on Craigslist and I found some gear. Good idea? Uh, it's a split bag. If you find a decent motor for a decent price, that's okay. And uh, if you find mostly any... So there are a few wings that you could get and be able to prove to yourself that they're flight worthy. But the wing is fabric and the wing is your aircraft. Right. So the safety is in the wing. All the motor does is take you in the air. So you're supposed to be always flying with an easy out. It's just fun flying. That's all it is. And you should be flying with an out at all times. It should be no issue to just land. Can you, if you bought a wing, is there a place you could like send it off to the manufacturer and have it checked and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, not the manufacturer, but there's... but. Maybe a dozen, I'd say, places around the country that you can send it for an inspection, and they test every single factor. They test the strength of the fabric, the porosity of the fabric, the length of the lines, down to the millimeter, and uh, they can even retune the glider back to factory specs. Basically, okay. uh, stretching lines, reduced porosity in the fabric. That's a big word. What's it mean? 
It basically, Crossing means holes. It Not basically holes. means air is rammed into that wing, and it becomes a big taut balloon. And the less porous the wing is, the more it'll hold air in. As it loses that because of weather, and basically it lets air through it. Okay, yeah, how much air is coming through? I think just cellulite. None. Seepage. None. You want basically none. And as it gets older, it starts to let air through the fabric, and it produces less lift, and just the whole the whole wing changes, the flight characteristics change, it gets more laggy, stuff like that. As we all get older, air seeps out. It happens. It does. Michelle complains about that all the time with me. She's like, Jesus Christ, if you fart one more time, I'm like, geez, I'm sorry. It's in there. What do you want me to do? I had frijoles for dinner. Frijoles. So if somebody was like, if they want to get if they want to get started paramotoring, what kind of upfront costs are they looking at for training and gear, new and used? Like, what's the what's the route? They're like, hey, dude, this sounds pretty cool. I want to do some of this. Yeah, yeah. Typically, not always, but a, a good majority see it on YouTube. And like I said before, some some will see them flying overhead. We've been tracked down that way before, but. They want to see different things. Uh, your more 40s and older group are typically going to do a bunch of research. Some some of your younger folks do their due diligence also. But there's a bunch of schools and people will filter to you through advertising and word of mouth. And you want to do training. Basically, that's the... That's the gist of it uh, in the industry and on YouTube is it's just too dangerous to try to teach yourself, which it's kind of a lot of people think that they want to teach themselves. And I do. It's just I already bought a wing. I started cutting them the other day. So so they they come to any given school based on whatever input they've got. But go get training. The idea. Go get training is the idea, and it can be anywhere from, you know, a good school, anywhere from eighteen hundred to three three thousand dollars for the training, depending on how many days in a row it is. And there, there's lots of different people. Some will train here and there. We our approach is that it's easier to retain the information if you're doing it day after day mm -hmm. so we do it for 10 days in a row and then after that some students get it and they just go on and fly and some don't get it as fast and we allow them to come back when class isn't in session in between classes and get extra flights and get extra one-on-one -on -one instruction some people don't learn well when there's four other students there yeah, that's pretty cool Stuff like that, but basically the the point is, I'm sure it's typical for GA. Like you don't really know what gear you want, you don't know what kind of flying you want to do until you learn how to do it, and then you start to go, okay, I want to do this kind of flying. I I might want this kind of gear. I might be into this that kind of thing. I guess so. We do like rent a Cessna with an instructor. It's just, it's a different line. yeah it's a different process a little bit in GA and I think GA kind of has a little bit of like you know there's different way different flavors of GA from like 172 to an aerobatic biplane to you know go fast airplane <clears throat> motor you know, glider like yeah it's there's a big spectrum there's a big spectrum I'm sure there's also you know some of that in paramotoring because but it's a little bit more of a progression like you always start off on a beginner wing because the wings are rated like was beginner intermediate advanced or how does the rating system work. Yeah, the rating system that we typically go by is from Europe because okay. there's far more paraglider pilots in Europe, and that's where it came from is paragliding. It's just adding a motor. So they have to have sport pilot licenses. So Simps. <laughs> yeah, so their, uh, their rating system uh, is created for them to meet the criteria of their sport pilot licenses. So we go by that. And it's basically A is the safest through D is the least safe that's rated. And is then it, they go to unrated as well. 
Is there double D's? Unrated is always the best. Unrated is the Unrated best. double D's? Unrated is the double D's, yeah. Nice. But, so, just... Like, if someone's like, I gotta save up how much money to go get training and get a, get started? Yeah, typically two to three thousand for the training and good training will come with basically it is the rental of the gear and the yep. instruction all at once and a brand new motor you could spend uh between eight and twelve depending on what you want and a new wing is going to be between mid three thousand to four thousand just a hair over four thousand depending on the, basically, it depends on the size and manufacturer of the wing. The bigger they get, the more fabric, more work. Bob. Right. Same thing at Victoria's Secret. Huh. Yeah, the bigger, the more expensive. And that's not true. It's just fabric. I don't think that's true. No, that was a that was a joke. <laughs> I don't shop there anymore. I've never <laughs> shopped. There. And that's new gear, so it's you know you can spend less on a on a decent motor. You just want to. Do your research and make sure you're not getting something that's too old and outdated. Or... I think the idea, though, would be to, like, go to training, use their gear, and then talk to your guys. Talk to the instructors, the the, the school staff, and be like, here's what I'm looking for. I mean, I'm sure you guys probably, you have your own gear that you probably cycle through, I imagine, right? You sell stuff off as it goes. Yeah, um, we sell gear. We sell multiple different brands of motor, multiple different brands of wing. We sell our, our used school gear. Right, and we also make it a clear point that you do not need to buy gear from us. We just sell gear, right? You know, not trying to push anything on anybody. Just we have gear available, and we can also help you find gear. If you happen to find something used, we can tell you if it's worth buying or not. Nice. I think we should finish this up with a lightning round, don't you think? Lightning round. <clears throat> All right. What's your uh what's your record altitude in the paramotor? Just hair over a mile. So six grand. Six grand. Okay. AGO. What's the fastest you've ever been on a paramotor? Around fifty miles per hour. Nice. What's the lowest you've ever been in a paramotor? Zero miles per <laughs> hour. <laughs> that wasn't that was easy. Are we talking airspeed or what? anything so uh what kind of airspeed gauge do you use just to breeze on your face whether we're going up down or basically the glider has a trim speed like an airplane just flies what it's trimmed for do you guys ever fly formation yes is it cool yes do you have any videos <laughs> yeah stay tuned to flying knuckleheads for videos of travis doing formation you ever gone skydiving no it's on your list Yes. Nice. I think we could probably help you with that. What if you just throw your parachute, your motor off while you're flying? Okay, wait a minute. Better than that. Don't take your motor. Just take your wing into an airplane and then just jump out of the airplane with your wing. Yeah, that's a reserve throw. It's not built for that. It'll just... <laughs> really? Yeah. Good to know. We had some plans. <clears throat> We'll you do to... not open a paraglider at terminal velocity. Not terminal velocity. I'm just yeah, like five before. So I mean the the bush or the zenith will slow down to like what thirty five. Yeah. Like what if you just like you and your par you got your par your paramotor and all bundled up and you just like roll out of the seat. I'm gonna go ahead and say no. That's, <sighs> that's too knuckleheaded. <laughs> <laughs> we found his line. Okay, cool. We found the line. Awesome. Now we can work backwards. <laughs> all right. The reserve shoot is it controllable? Or is uh, it like a square round? Uh, both. You can get either or. What's yours? It's uncontrollable. Uh, uh, boring. Square. Okay. Sounds like a square. Yes. Yeah. Square loser. Loser. <laughs> One of those. Says the loser. Okay. We've done enough. We've seen enough. We've heard enough. Stay tuned next week when we uh, say some other things. We explore Chris's CFI, how he became an advanced ground instructor, and why I never will. This is very true. All right. Thanks for joining us, Travis. It was a lot of fun well, having you over here. Thanks for having me, Dan. Well, uh, yeah, have some more paramotoring videos coming out soon, as well as this guy's going to be in a bush cat. That's going to happen real soon. I'm ready. Let's do it. Fly Cheers. safe. Don't be a... Starlight. <laughs> <laughs>